Hello, everybody. Welcome to the fifth episode. The fifth, the episode, fifth episode of Immoral Practicality. We made it for the fifth week. <laughs> interrupted my introduction. Carry on, Carry on. What's your name again? Rohan. I'm Nyla. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about the origins of the character. Um, Hippolyta, the queen of the Amazons, was a character from Greek mythology. Uh, in this version of the, of, of the of her story, she's longing for a child. Mm -hmm. Now, Diana believes that the Amazons are all, all immortal. Mm -hmm. And in certain versions of the story, they are. In other versions of the story, which I really like, the Amazons, three times a century, so essentially every 30 years, go out to sea, and then they seduce sailors, <laughs> they bang them, and then they murder them, and then they come back. Oh my so god! So it's pregnant Amazons come back. That right? is crazy. The women, the girls, they raise as Amazons. The boys, <laughs> they trade off with uh, the god Hephaestus for weapons. Okay, so that's how it, they maintain an all women's world. They do, and he Hephaestus is god of the forge, mm -hmm. and so he creates weapons for them. I really, really like that idea. Also, Hephaestus uses those boys to man his forge. Okay. Right? Okay. Cool idea. Cool. I like that more because in, in you read Greek mythology a little bit. In oh. what version of Greek mythology do the gods seem benevolent enough to grant immortality to a race of women on an island isolated from the world? When are they so nice? They're not. Gods They're are vindictive, not. cruel. I think patriarchy came from there. From from Greek, don't 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 make Why not? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> so it's signaling out. Okay, carry on. <laughs> <laughs> not an argument anyway, for this so, one. So so um, Hippolyta, she can't go out and bang a random sailor. Yeah, she's so the queen. So what she does is uh, she decides to create. She really wants a baby, right? So what she does is she makes one from clay. Yeah. And then she begs the gods to give it, and, and therefore. And, and, and they do. Yeah. Um, in another version of the story, she just has sex with us. <laughs> I don't care much for that Let's version. <laughs> I don't really care much for that version. This I one's like, funner. This yeah, is more I, I like spiritual. This it's, it's more spiritual, right? So she tries to create, the, and therefore Wonder Woman is the perfect woman. Mm -hmm. Because she not was only was born has from no male seed. Exactly, and <laughs> that's what they say. In the story. Born from no male seed. <laughs> I'm gonna laugh for 20 minutes. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, bring us, uh, bring us to um, this okay, world. Okay, so her, that's, that was her her birth, right? Mm -hmm. So she was created from clay, and uh, she was raised as such. Mm -hmm. And then eventually, when she becomes an adult, mm -hmm. uh, a young pilot would crash on the mascara right. during a war. The mascara. During, the mascara. And and during during a war and. Obviously, during the creation of Wonder Woman, it's 1941, it was during the Second World War. Mm -hmm. As we go further, you know, as this time progresses more, the wars keep getting updated. But in, in any case, pilot Steve Trevor, his plane crash lands on Themyscira, and Diana finds him. It's the first, he's the first man to ever step foot on, on the island. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, she decides, she takes a liking to him, and then decides to go out and explore. Mm -hmm. And we don't really see much motivation for her to do that, to leave paradise and Fred among us, among, amongst mortals. In the second story that we're about to discuss, we mm -hmm. see her motivations a little bit more. Yeah. Because this is an updated version of the story. Yeah. So let's get into that. Let's get into this. Uh, okay, this is a story where we get to uh, see a 12, 13 year old um, right. Wonder Woman who is, you know, going from being a child or being treated as a child, stepping into womanhood and embracing all her powers and learning through the process. Right, so she desires to be treated like an adult, as, exactly. as all 12 year olds do. <laughs> do not patronize this character. Okay, tell us um, about the story. Just give us a little gist of what happens. So Diana's there. on an adventure. She's trying to steal an egg from like a mythological creature called the Harpy. Because. It's, it's her birthday. birthday. It's her birthday. And this Happy egg is birthday. gonna make her cake. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> that's, oh, that's, that's the cake. That's the egg they're gonna batter. Yeah. It's a okay. huge cake, by the way. It's a huge cake. Anyway, so. Uh, oh, okay. it's a huge right. egg. But, but the reason yet. for her to go to such lengths to get the egg is because, is because she was challenged. She needs to present her mother, the queen, with a tribute on her birthday so that she's taken seriously by everyone else. It's her birthday and she has to give a present to herself. 
To her mother. To her mother? Yeah. Wow. Uh, brown moms? Right, right. <laughs> brown moms. <laughs> White moms. Green oh moms. My God. Anyway, so oh, uh, she's doing that, and, and then they're having a rager. Right? As a, because that's how Amazon party. Uh-huh. Uh, but anyway, they're celebrating her birthday and there's a party. Uh, and uh, not like a frilly birthday party, but like a, cel a feast as Greeks, you know, ancient Greeks did. And so um, suddenly another teenage girl, a little older than Diana, comes in. And What's goes, that bitch's name again? Her name is Alika. Mm -hmm. Alika. So Alika comes in. All these... All these... Alika is actually based on Artemis a little bit. Oh, okay. Um, Alika. Yeah, so shit. so Alika comes in and Alika don't says, don't says don't to a fucking chance. Okay, so Alika comes in and says to uh, Hippolyta, the queen, that you know I would like to challenge the princess for a duel, and she does. Please. And she goes all in, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, she can handle the. By the way, they're fighting with um, wooden swords. Yeah. Because they're children. They're children. So and this is important. Or so the they're treated as. Right. They are kids. They're twelve. So you know they're they're fighting with their sword, their wooden swords, and. Diana realizes that Alika's going ham, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So Alika is not playing by the rules, and her I think she wants to. She wants to agitate anger, Diana. Exactly, she yeah. wants to anger Diana to the point where Diana loses control right. and she can receive contempt for it from her mom. Take a sip. Yeah, right. Right, Pretty exactly. Much. She wants to get her in trouble. Yeah, she's she's being a fucking bully. Right, class right, A yeah. bully. She's a mean girl, you know. Uh, so, so Alika's doing this, and uh, Diana's like, oh, I, I can't defend myself without, with like, you know, I, I'm holding back, mm -hmm. obviously, because I don't want to kill her, mm -hmm. but, because she's super strong, and uh, so she's trying to really kind of maneuver around her, but then at some point she just hits her really hard. Yeah, she ended up and hurting Alika, her a little bit. Alika calls her Clay. Yeah. And because she's version, such a bully, and she's a pussy. She's a bully. Yeah, so she, exactly, she just exactly. has to find a way to... Because words are the sharpest fucking sword, so that's what she did. Okay. Uh, so. <laughs> that's a, that's a, that's that's a pussy that, that is what. <laughs> that is what worked here. Right. She calls right, true, him true. play. Right. Finally gets her to be really angry. Right. Because and, she feels absolutely. And patronized. this is actually a new addition to the character because originally in the old stories, Wonder Woman doesn't have she, like there's no reason for her to be a hero. She's from Paradise Island. She, everything's perfect. But here. Because she's made from clay, and because other people are born naturally, and they're also Alika's older than her. Mm -hmm. Her very being and is being trashed, right, talked right. against. Alika, Alika's a little older than her, so Alika's jealous. Obviously, she's the princess. She's well treated by everybody, and Alika calls her clay. And we realize that all the other children also call her clay behind her back. Yeah. Because they know that. she was made from clay. Yeah, and she knows that. Right. And because all knows. the Amazons know, and I guess the adults appreciate what a miracle she is, that she was given life by the gods. But the youngins don't. The young ones don't, because you don't accept somebody who's different from you first. Second, she's a princess, so everyone's really formal and nice to her. and She does not have friends. She doesn't have friends. So here's a little girl who's royalty, and so everyone's super formal to her, mm -hmm. and everyone who's... Like, she, one, she doesn't have anyone her age right. on the island, and everyone's a little older than her, and they're all treating her crap. Right. And they're bullying her, so it really gets to her. She runs into the forest, as, as everyone and does. And she has this, again, this identity crisis. She has an identity I crisis. am different in my own, in the land, among my own people. She feels like a freak, because she's stronger, she is more powerful, right. she's more resilient, right. and, and therefore, like, she can easily hurt. She can't play with people, you know. Like she's, she doesn't fit in mm -hmm. to this paradise world that she lives in. Right. So she so goes into this stream. She's crying. Like almost, almost drowning out her sorrows. Okay. Pretty picturesque, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And that's when there's this mystery voice that that approaches her from the woods. Right. And tell us about that so, godly so character. The godly character comes in. One woman throws a Diana. She throws a little sword at him. Mm -hmm. A little knife. Mm -hmm. Sword. He throws a knife at him, he catches Who it. Who are you sneaking up, sneaking up? You know better than just sneak, right, right, right. <laughs> sneak up on he me. He catches the, the blade and then he says, uh, have, do you spend more time in the arena than you do in your temple? Which is yeah. an awesome Which is intro. awesome. Because, uh, and then she goes, no, who are you? She yeah. says, I, I be Olympian. I be <laughs> blood, I be guts, I be iron. Oh my God. I be God. war. So the god of war himself hails it's down on this era. Yeah. 
he is here. Mm. No one invited him. No he one saw this him. little girl. Okay, so right. at first I thought it was really pervy. <laughs> oh, no. I really did, okay? No. Like, picking on little girls who are lost. Hey, little <laughs> girl in the forest. Right, right. No, one, on. no one taught her to not talk to strangers. <laughs> You know? Any man in this land is a stranger, okay? Oh, of course. And men are not allowed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so they don't... Uh, that but, is hidden from the world. But this is the God of War. The God he doesn't of war. need permission. So, uh, as when Diana was succeeding in the trials initially in the beginning of the story, and when she's fighting and, uh, you know, proving her prowess... This is the moment she hit rock bottom. This is indeed the moment she hit rock bottom. But, like, when she was kind of showing how well-trained she is, her mother was thinking... Uh, her mother was thinking... Someday you're gonna make a great queen. Just to herself. To Diana someday will make a great queen. She'll make her be a replacement for me. We learn eventually that Ares, the god of war, is uh, coming to Diana and then offers to train her because he wants her to become the next god of war. Rohan, mind boggling thought. Everyone wants Diana to be the next best thing. Superman was going off to deep space to fight some mission. It was like, in my absence, you're the one who takes care of everything. Right. Hippolyta, her own mother, when I'm gone, my daughter becomes the queen. God of war, when I'm gone, this warrior saves the world. Right. Also, Everyone here, is here's the interesting thing. As a god of war, he's eternal, right? He, he doesn't die. Of course, yeah. So, oh, you said eternal? <laughs> Why did I hear something else? Okay, so, so I, I don't, okay. So, uh, so Ares. What did I even hear? Right, so. We'll never know. So Ares, god of war, is tired of war. Normally in, in any depiction of, of the god of war, we see him as a bad guy, right? Because war is inherently bad. Lol. But like, in, in, in this version... Did you just say lol? Again, the realist perspective. I'm a fucking lol. Do not. Okay. So um, in, in, in this version, at least, Ares is tired of war. He's tired of his own nature. And so he wants to pass it on and he wants a worthy successor. Yeah. He sees that in Diana. And so the God therefore of, he trains her. Therefore he trains her. So he offers to train her and, and for the next year. And she said, I want to learn. She's so eager to she learn is, is. how to fight the fair way. Right. Instead of actually killing someone. I, I don't think she gets all that from him. She just wants to prove herself. Right? There you go. And so, so right, and, and, and he's providing that for her. He also gives her, he also accepts her. Mm -hmm. Because like, he chose for, her. For, yeah, like, for who she like, is. The Amazonians or the Amazons worship the Greek gods. Mm -hmm. Now, if a Greek god shows up to you and gives you, like, any form of reciprocation, you're gonna be like, I'm special. And that's what she feels. Because for the first time, she doesn't feel like a freak. She's like, I am special. Mm -hmm. He chose me, right? So, like, like, I, maybe I'm worth something. It feels and it's like to a, child. a father figure. He's a father figure. He's a father he's figure. A fa he's the father that she never had. The way that my own procession towards the guy, tur the turnabout, at first I thought he was this pervy dude. Right. Now I know that he's actually like a father figure. Right, because we, don't, we know how to... shady men just hang out in alleyways to mm -hmm. kidnap children to raise them. Mm -hmm. Is there but in that world, that's not a, an acceptable scenario because Wonder Woman is strong as fuck. Right. So, when they're in the training and Wonder Woman is like thinking to herself, listen, okay, I just realized wooden shields or wooden weapons are for children. I want a sword. She says, I want a real sword. And tell us what, she, what he says. He says, okay. <laughs> at first, no, but listen, we'll, we'll, we'll get like to that. it. We'll, we'll get to it. So at first, he says, all right, I'm not going to stop you. So they both get swords and he's training her, right? Wait, he says, if you pick up a sword, not yet. Mm -hmm. Okay. So he, he he's he's fighting. Yeah. He, he's teaching her how to fight. Okay. She disarms him, right? Mm -hmm. And then he disarms her. Yes. And then picks the sword and then actually pins her down. Mm -hmm. And that's when when she says, oh, I, "I'm I ready to that. die by your hand." Oh my God! Yes, I remember. That was like lesson one hundred and one. What bitch? I'm right. training you right. for you to accept death. The yeah, fuck yeah. you mean? And then and then he says, "That's it. Like I'm I'm not training you to accept death." You will not die on this day. A but, true warrior. But when a true warrior picks up a sword, he must be ready to kill or die. Right? So that is what he teaches her. That's the, the wisdom that he imparts on her. 101. Right. So as as he's training her, a year passes. Father figure. Mm -hmm. As he's training her, a year passes. Master. Teacher. <laughs> keep going, keep going. Sensei. <laughs> That was coming. <laughs> right. So, uh, um, so 
uh, where was I? Oh, and so so he he goes and he trains her for a year, and then Diana's thirteenth birthday comes up. So again, she has to present a tribute to her mother. This time around, Ares, God of War, presents her with the test. Presents her with the test. test. So test. he takes test. her to uh, uh, the Minotaur. Now the Minotaur is a Greek, again, a character from Greek myth, who is half man, half bull, mm -hmm. right? And he's ugly. He is. Scary looking, and he probably Scary stinks. looking monster. Yeah. Uh, it's probably a slimy snot coming. <laughs> I'm picturing Harry Potter, like, giant guy. The giant? <laughs> <laughs> it was like... the, Min the Minotaur might be, some the Minotaur might be scarier than that. Uh, like because it's a, it's, a, it's, so. it's a powerful being. Um, so anyway. That that ogre was dumb. Carry on. Okay, so so uh, I mean the Minotaur ain't getting too many IQ points either. But like, okay, <laughs> so the Minotaur. But, but he was a threat nonetheless. We can't. Right. Did we cut all this. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so Ares takes Diana uh, on her thirteenth birthday to her new test uh, to to a test, and then she walks into the labyrinth of the Minotaur. The Minotaur is a mythological creature, half man, half bull, and uh, in in Greek mythology, the Minotaur is ultimately defeated by a demigod, Theseus. In this story, uh, Diana has to go face the Minotaur. Mm -hmm. So, in the Greek myth, Theseus ties a rope because he's going into a labyrinth of maze. Right? He doesn't know the way. Mm -hmm. No one knows how to navigate a maze. Uh, and the Minotaur is the maze has been built around the Minotaur to keep the gate inside. Diana ties a piece of rope. To the gate. This was she a serious in. moment. She walks in with the rope so that she doesn't lose her way, mm -hmm. and then she defeats the Minotaur, right? Uh, uh, using she the defeats rope. the Minotaur using Ares's technique mm -hmm. of disarming, and you know she's learned a lot from him. She's learned a lot, and uh, she she flings the rope around the Minotaur's leg, yanks it. Yes. Right. It that falls. Was so and then cool. She hits it on the head with a rock. Yeah. And then she she knocks it out. Mm -hmm. She's like, yeah, I won. <laughs> Yeah, thirteen-year-old <laughs> high, you know. And then Ares shows up. And mm -hmm. was like, words can uh, like I I am so proud of you. Here's a sword. And she's like, cool, I get a sword, <laughs> a real life sword. I can show mom. Yeah, I want a sword. I'm a real boy. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Pinocchio. Anyway, <laughs> I mean, do, do you think? Okay, honestly, because he's made from clay. Do you think he has a Pinocchio complex? Just keep talking. Okay. But, uh, uh, no, I mean, it's, it's thematically appropriate. The tangents so, to yeah, Harry yeah, Potter's yeah. ogre Pinocchio complex. Right. Carry on. So, uh, uh, where was I? Oh, right. So she, he presents her with a sword. Treasure. The treasure. This is the treasure you can go sword. show off She's to your mom. She's very excited with the sword. Mm -hmm. And then he says, kill the Minotaur. Yeah. And the Minotaur is lying there defeated. Mm -hmm. And Diana feels bad. She doesn't kill him. Mm -hmm. So she says, I will not kill him. And then mm -hmm. she turns the sword around Ares. Mm -hmm. And Ares says, You must kill it. You must kill it. And then, oh, was actually, that's when she turns the sword. She's actually standing between him and the Minotaur mm -hmm. to defend it. And Ares goes, like, Do you know what happens when you do you understand the consequences of pointing your sword at me? Mm -hmm. Or at any man? Mm -hmm. Or any being? That means if you, you have you, to kill You better be ready to kill me. And then she starts crying because it's it's her father figure, right? It's it's that's who she knows to be her her, or at least that's who she conceives is her father. And uh, Ares backhands her, right? You have failed me. You failed me, and so he realizes that she cannot it's become so the next extreme. He took it. He was so proud of her. Right. It so, takes this much an <laughs> act of so uh, uh, fake emotions. Abigi. <laughs> So Ares is disappointed in her, mm -hmm. and Ares goes away. This is what we call a volatile piece of shit. Also, when, when he backhands her, the sword is knocked out of her hand. She never picks up on the sword. Mm -hmm. Never again. And uh, Diana, the Minotaur gets up. Diana's worried and the Minotaur's gonna you know, attack her now. And the Minotaur displays respect, uh, and the Minotaur walks away. Mm -hmm. So Wonder Woman... See, so resorting to fought, uh, violence and death. That realist motherfucking approach isn't right. the only way. That is the point of the creation of Wonder Woman. Exactly. Going back to when we discussed the origins, right, right. they wanted to create a character that that would like use her wit, her kindness, her nurturing, her her loving nature. Exactly, and I think this story very wonderfully encapsulates all those things. And as she walks out of the labyrinth. The she is capable of killing. She is. Make no mistake. She right. can. She's a proper badass. Amon Quick. 
けで。OK。But、um, as she's walking out of the labyrinth,、yeah. um, um, she stands and she says, Will my kindness be enough of a tribute to my mother? Like, will a warrior accept kindness? It's a question. That is so beautiful. That is so beautiful. That's Wonder Woman for you. That is Wonder Woman. So, at the end of all of this, um, we got to talk a little bit about the cultural influence of the character. Yes, of course, of course.、Uh, Are you gonna trash the movie now? I am a hundred percent gonna trash the movie. But <laughs> but here's here's what I I did not. I don't want to watch the movie. I've watched bits of it. I don't like it. So in the movie, Wonder Woman carries a sword,、mm-hmm. right? Tell us a little bit about the No Man's Land thing as well. I, I would. Like, that's why you want a good scene in the movie, which I really like. So the in, only good in, scene. in the movie,、uh, Wonder Woman carries a sword,、mm-hmm. and it's thematically relevant because she's actually fighting Ares. The, mo- the villain of the movie is Ares,、um, and、uh, she's got a sword called the God Killer Killer Sword, and she's carrying it around and she's fighting. Great.、Right. Wonder Woman should not carry a sword,、mm-hmm. and the reason for that is is just, that exact story. It's really a story, right? Like, here's the thing: Superman. Why has, would she need a sword? Superman has an impractical morality, as we discussed before. Yeah. Right. In <clears throat> inspiration. Right, right.、Uh, so he's. It's, we it's, talk it's, about the impractical morality in the immoral practicality. We do, yeah. But see, he has like a naivety. Which is ridiculous. He doesn't kill demons. He doesn't do any of that stuff. Wonder Woman will, but only when necessary. When necessary. And that when is. There's no other way. And and that's that's where the restraint part is important because otherwise. And judgment too, Rohan. Yes, because、yeah. see, she's been trained as a warrior,、mm-hmm. right? So she will kill when needed, but she's also Lady Superman, right? Like she has. She's as powerful as him.、Mm-hmm. Why would she need to kill usually ever, unless it's not an option? You can't make a compelling character. I mean, okay. Here's my question: If she is as strong as Superman, which she is, right? Why does she need a sword? So powerful. I mean, okay, she, she can break things apart with her hand. With her hand. Why? The sword is just an accessory. It's. it's, it's I. I don't、it's、like that because see the swords and the shield. And it's somehow demeaning her powers in my eyes. It is demeaning her powers. Tell us a little bit about the cultural impact of Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman has a very limited cultural impact. Okay. As opposed is, to Superman and Batman. Well, actually, that's that's not really true. She does have a huge impact. She's very. She's not ever anyone's pop, most favorite character.、Mm-hmm. And the reason for that is because. She's not very appealingly written most of the time.、Mm-hmm. It's a little weird because the movie. Dis- I don't. I don't like the movie.、Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm not a fan of it. Because of the、Did、fact I- that you have already read certain versions in, in the comics. And because she's a sword wielding, yeah, yeah. murdering harpy who、exactly. kills everything in her path. But that's、like、not that. how we read her. That's not how we read her, right? Like the, it doesn't go with our entire lifetime. We have known her one、I'm、way. I'm a snob. So, <laughs> is is what the point is. But but the thing、It's、is easy to hate him. Right. But the thing is, twenty the twenty seventeen movie Wonder Woman、yeah. did bring her to the cultural zeitgeist,、mm-hmm. and people do actually like her now. Yeah. Right. Because、so、that did some good. It it did a lot of good, and it actually made her、uh, noticed,、mm-hmm. get noticed by other people. Right. It's not that people didn't know who Wonder Woman was. It's just that when you think of the impact of Superman、mm-hmm. or Batman, or much、Spider-Man, much wider, right? Mu- much widespread. Wonder Woman doesn't have that appeal,、mm-hmm. and I think one of the reasons is because of the way she's certain things, characteristics about her are, are made. For example, Wonder Woman is an immortal,、mm-hmm. right? And the, that argument is kind of justified by saying, oh, Wonder Woman is an immortal. She's ageless. She's lived on Themyscira for like three thousand years.、Mm-hmm. She is the Thor of the DC universe. Yeah,、okay. you can very much so say that. You can say that. Yeah. Here's my point. Thor is a god. Wonder Woman is made of clay. Not, not, not. That, that's not the point I'm talking about. But Thor is a god.、Yeah. Okay. Thor is a war god, and sure, Thor is like a million years old. Yeah. But Thor has been to the nine realms, including Asgard and Midgard, and、uh, you know Jotunheim and and. Helheim and Svartalheim, and he's fought people, and he's banged chicks all over. You know, from all of these nine realms, he's had adventures.、Mm-hmm. Wonder Woman lives on an island.、Mm-hmm. What is it? Okay, 
What, what is the point of making a character 3,000 years old if we're, she lives we're doing on a an island? Okay, this is a rent. And, and how does that make her appealing? Now, right. now, now let me tell you, here's a 20 year old girl, okay, who lives on an island and then finds a man and then gets off the island and becomes a hero. Versus, she's a 3,000 year old woman mm -hmm. who lives on an island, finds a man and gets off. What, what, what is the point of making her an immortal? Right. You, could, you could say she's an immortal and has the potential to live for a thousand years. I get that. What is the point of her being 3,000 years if it doesn't add anything to her character? She might as well be 17. Or 25. Mm -hmm. Why 3,000? Why are all the Amazons immortal? That doesn't make sense. Why would they be technologically more advanced than humanity if they have no need for innovation? Because innovation comes from new generations. <laughs> Why? That is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. That is That's why when you, when, you, when, you, when you read up on one of them, they go, oh, she's 3,000. What did she do? That's what they did in the movie. The movie takes place during World War I. The Wonder Woman movie takes place during World War I, right? 1918. She shows up. She fights. Her boyfriend dies. She's sad. She retires. And then she shows up in Batman vs. Superman, which is in 2016. What did she do for 100 years? Nothing. Where was she? Where was she was a museum curator. Was why a museum should curator. I care? Where? Why? Interesting. Why? 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 I don't, I don't, I don't get it. Okay. We have a lot of glasses around. Just, it, 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 why the invisible jet? It is so unnecessary. Yeah. Like just, just brush up the character a little bit. There, 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 there are issues where she talks to animals. Right. What is she, Cinderella? It's Snow White. <laughs> it's it's, Cinderella. Don't, don't. It's Cinderella. You have a character. Right. You have a thing, mm -hmm. right? You have her morality. You have her set up. Yeah. The lasso is iconic. You were blasting so hard, my hair came down. The, the, the lasso's goddamn iconic, right? Yeah, you were you blasting have it so ready. hard. She's not, she's not Xena warrior princess. No, she's okay? not. She's not Red Sonia. I'm scared She's Wonder Woman. Stop. Wonder Woman inspired those characters. For those sure. Those are violent psychopaths. They're violent fucking psychopaths. You can't have a character who has a sword and then ground her to a morality and go, oh, she uses it sometimes. Yeah. No! She never uses it. She never uses the sword. And you can't just give a woman a sword if she's not going to use it. Yeah. She has no purpose for it. She's stronger than that. I, I agree with everything like you said. That. And I let you go off on that rant because you're so passionate. It's almost sweet. <laughs> <laughs> almost. Almost. But that's the thing. See, like, like it's scary. Your character, My heart is pounding. You need, you need your character to make sense a little bit, right? Like the same thing with Superman. Get rid of all the Krypton stuff. It's small, but you, you, you need to concentrate on. Right. You can get rid of all her 3,000 year history where she does nothing. Yeah. Why, why does she show up on Earth during World War One? Why not during the Iraqi War? It's the same thing. It's the same fucking thing. Right? Unnecessary. It's unnecessary. Like, you, you make this character, you give her her morality, you let her be as she is. And, and you, you bring forth the parts which make her human and intriguing. Her, her powers, rather than external right. random bullshit you said, that people on the audience is gonna like, you know, cheer for. Don't do that. This is where real value of stories and characters start to yeah, fade. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and... It becomes so fucking jaded, about, I can't We're talking either. about how Wonder Woman is like, kind of confused, right? Mm -hmm. She's from a world where women are idealized. Yes, right? yes. And, and she herself is that she yeah. represents that and all the women around her are smitten by her mm -hmm. right they're all like oh my god you are what i strive to be right she has a crisis of identity because she doesn't have that for herself exactly she doesn't know what that is because she sees her she looks up to her mom mm -hmm. her mom is like a close-minded crazy person she, she hates men she hates men and that okay the argument about feminism over here you cannot have a world i always say this with one or the other and that's what they have built. Yeah. And it's not Sultana's dream, Rohan. It isn't. Okay. I mean... I mean, what I'm listen, trying to say is... I... That's why there was a gap in her. Because right, they right. differentiated between man and woman, and then they created a character, clay and godly. And then right. this person does not know where... she. The reason why she never fit in the real world among Batman, Superman, people, you know, she couldn't blend in, she couldn't fight, you know, she couldn't perform at her best. It's because she never fit in at her own home. Right, but I, she, think, I think neither her, here nor there. her desire is to fit into this world. And she this fits in more so here than, than there. she does. In because here. over there, everyone's so extreme. Right, right. Because it's, it's war. Right. It's like you also, only... It's, it's the desire of a young girl to 
escape the bonds of family mm -hmm. and explore the world for her. Ex it's ex curiosity. Especially when the family is, when moms are that family overpowering on the daughter. Overbearing traditionalist one. Exactly. Yeah. See, those are the themes of the character that you need to bring forth. Exactly. And, and these are relatable. Right. These are understandable. All right, so with that, we're going to wrap up this episode. Thank, thank you, you for, all for thank watching. Thank you all for watching. Like the video, subscribe, uh, tune in next week for another episode. And our channel is called Immoral Practicality. Our channel is called Fantastic Philosopher. Your podcast is called Immoral Practicality. I fucking, will I ever get it right? Thank Probably you. Probably not, and it's going to become a shtick, and we're going to stick to it. <laughs>